Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're back. How's everybody doing? Another day in the market. Futures, a little bit green right now. Overall, it was uh, it was a mixed day. The S&P was red. The Russell 2000 was red. The Nasdaq was a little bit green. The ARK ETF was very green today. We're going to talk about that for quite a while. Um, Dow Jones was down 1% as well. So we're going to get into everything. Just starting off with Bitcoin as per usual. I don't know if you heard that, but really loud motorbike outside. Um, Bitcoin, we talked about this falling wedge last night and uh, it broke out. And since last night, Bitcoin is currently up about three, four percent. So very nice move on the breakout. If you watch last night's stream right at the start of the stream, I, it was literally brought up and yeah, it's pretty much been playing out. It uh, got around the 50 percent retrace, which is what you would want from a falling wedge as a minimum. It hit that and now you're getting a little bit of a pullback. If you go over to the daily on Bitcoin, it still is pretty, let's call it 50-50. It could go out of direction. There's not too much of a signal um, in the short term on the daily time frame. It's just kind of on the four hour you had that wedge. It's already playing out. We'll see what happens. Um, I'm just going to cover the other five altcoin trades. I'll literally finish them in like two minutes. After I do that, we're going to talk about the overall market. Then we're going to talk about Clover, AMC, SoFi all the ongoing trades like Fisker and X and Wish. Um, and in about probably 20, 25 minutes when I finish covering everything, we're gonna do take a request. So make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Um, and yeah, just to kick things off really quickly, just gonna recap how the crypto trades are doing. The Dogecoin trade is up 8% since the entry, nice bounce off the 200 day moving average. The Atom trade is still up about 25% since the entry, not too much of a change there. The chain link trade is still up around 57-58% since the entry two weeks ago. The NU trade is still at the entry if, if you missed it. It's really done nothing. Um, I just want to see it hold above 20 cents. Still have the divergence, just not too much of a move yet. And then finally I put out a new crypto idea today, which was Filecoin. Um, this one's right at the entry as well. Double bottom, potentially. Bullish bat harmonic pattern, classic bullish divergence on the daily, reclaiming this important level, which was support in May. That's a new idea. And that's really it for the crypto trade. Just want to talk about how they've been doing. Moving on to the stock market, S&P futures are up about a fifth of a percent and the NASDAQ futures are up 0.14%. Russell 2000 futures are up almost half a percent, which is pretty cool to see. Um, but yeah, for today, looking at the NASDAQ overall, slightly green to close um other than that not too much it's still just kind of doing nothing i guess it did fill the gap um it had a good morning pulled a little bit in the afternoon there's really not much to do here still around all-time highs on the nasdaq there isn't much of any reading in my opinion other than the trend which is still very very bullish for the nasdaq look at the s p 500 on the other hand a little bit of a red day today we've been talking about this classic bearish divergence on the daily we'll see what this eventually turns into if it turns into anything still making higher highs still very close to all-time highs just kind of an inside day today for the s p 
500. The Russell was actually down 1% today. I would like to see it get back above 219 tomorrow. That's kind of like the mid level in this ascending triangle. Um, but really anything above this white line should still be fine for the Russell 2000 for all of you small cap traders. And then finally, it's in the title of the stream, it's in the thumbnail of the stream, the ARK ETF, which for me is pretty important because a lot of the swing trades that I put out, um, you know, are these types of names, growth, innovation, mid cap names. Um, and it was an okay day for them. I mean, a lot of the trades were actually a little bit red, um, maybe just a little bit of a different sector from ARK or just some of the higher holdings in it. But regardless, very nice day for ARK, up two and a half percent and a little bit of like a mini I don't know if I'd call it an ascending triangle. You have about, you actually do have five touches if you kind of look at three on the top and then two on the bottom. So kind of, it's not the cleanest pattern, but if it does break this supply line, there could be room back up to 130 for the ARK ETF. The MACD looks fine on the daily. This could be big, you know, back in around May 13th and the 14th when I was streaming, the ARK was all the way down here. All of the SPACs and the EVs and the pot stocks and the retail stocks were getting demolished. And there was a bullish crab pattern it was this one right over here. And I talked about how bullish it looked. There was even divergence on the daily, it looked amazing. And then we had a great pretty much second half of May and all of June for ARC type stocks. I'm sure many of you remember. And then July was just horrible. As you can see over here, just nonstop red pretty much. And now we're just kind of going sideways. But if we do break out of this tomorrow, the day after, whenever it may be, that could send us a little bit higher and it could help out a lot of those mid cap stocks. So. Just keeping an eye on this going into tomorrow. Very good day. Nice close above the 200 day moving average. Bullish engulfing candle as well. And you bullishly engulfed two different or the two past days were engulfed today on the candle. So good stuff there. Um, other than that, for the market, the 10 year note was up almost 1%. Not too much of a change there, but kind of quadruple classic bullish divergence now on the US 10 year yield. Um, the dollar was bounced a little bit today, actually. And then the VIX was relatively flat. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Chinese stocks continuing the rally um, after the dump. They're just kind of bouncing back up. And that's really it for the overall market. Um, Uber and Roku reported after the close. Both of them were down quite a bit after hours. What else we got? Um, Cheddar Free says Feds Waller speaking tomorrow on digital currency for you crypto traders. Definitely keep an eye out for that. Um, and yeah, we'll see what tomorrow brings. Make sure to hit that like button. Let's get to 20 likes right now. Hit that subscribe button if you're new to the stream. Now we're probably going to talk about Clover, AMC, and SoFi. We'll start off with SoFi, then we'll do AMC, and then we'll do Clover. Uh, but SoFi had a huge day today. This is, some, this is a name I've been bringing up on stream for a couple weeks now. I've been watching it. Um, finally, having a great day. It was up 8%. It's had a lot of different days where it popped like in the morning, then it kind of just sold off in the afternoon, but today it held its gains pretty well um yeah there's it's kind of back in the middle of the support resistance range from like may um but good price action hidden bullish divergence continuing to play out hopefully me covering this on stream every night for like the past week or two um you know in this area has helped out some people because i know this is a name that a lot of retail traders are in um but yeah nice nine percent day today on sofi could be definitely correlated with robin hood which also went absolutely insane today. Um, I believe options, I think options opened up today. I don't know if they opened up yesterday, but yeah, it just, it went crazy. You know, IPOs, in my opinion, are not really a technical thing. This is just, it's all supply and demand in the short term. And there's not much technical analysis I can do here on the daily, but definitely really interesting to see how much it was up. Even on the one hour, there's not much I can do, so. Yeah, it went all the way up to about 85. I think it was halted for a little bit, came back down and then rallied into the close. I don't know what happened after hours. Um, we can take a look at it. Uh, it was down 6% after hours, came down to $66. Um, but yeah, that's really it for SoFi. And then moving on to AMC. We talked about this last night. We talked about it. I don't like it under 36. You know, 36 was a huge level to me. It was your high in 2015 and roughly in 2016. You broke that on uh, Monday. You broke that, broke back under that level. Yesterday, you had continuation to the downside. And then today, you had another huge red day. And you even took out, this was the other level we were talking about last night on the stream. You even took out this level, which was your lows from like middle of July. So still, you know, I said this last night, but for me on AMC, I, I'm not, you know, in terms of like a swing trader, I'm not really 
too focused on you know anything between 21 to 36 i would either like it above 36 or at 21 those are the two levels everything in between those levels is just historically you go straight up straight down straight up straight down straight up and then we'll see if we go back down to 21 i'm not calling for 21 on amc i'm just saying that that's the next major support on the daily of course you probably are pretty oversold on the one hour yeah i mean this is the most oversold you've been on the one hour really since last december pretty much the whole entire year this is the most oversold amc has been on the one hour so that could obviously lead to a reflex rally just because of how much it has dropped um but you never know just for me in terms of like a swing trader i might look at it as like a day trade but this is a very unclear zone for me i'm not bearish but i'm also not bullish i'm just kind of letting it do whatever it wants to do for the short term and we'll see what happens um what else check the 15 minute we'll take a look at that for robin hood just to look at it again um let's see 15 minute chart i mean on the 15 minute you actually do have some hidden bullish divergence it depends on how it opens tomorrow i do think it's gonna be pretty volatile in pre-market so i mean a lot can change overnight you never know um but that's really it for sofi and amc and then finally clover down two and a half percent today not a horrible day um but definitely not a good day it still is outside the falling wedge and again just because you break out of a falling wedge like i said the first night i talked about it does not mean you're going to go to the moon immediately it just means that was kind of a, an easy way to track your downtrend and now instead of you just making lower highs and lower lows you're actually for now just going sideways. So, I mean, it's better than just dropping nonstop like it did for pretty much all of or the second half of June and all of July. Um, but now it's just kind of going sideways. It's in a little range between like $7.85 and $8.50. Um, this was the first candle close Clover has had under $8, I believe, since June 1st. So in about two months, this is the first time, I believe. I don't... Uh, yeah, I think so. That Clover is closed under eight, which is not good, but it's not the end of the world. You can easily get back above that tomorrow if there's a good pre-market. It was up a little bit after hours as well. So we'll see what happens. Earnings coming out on the 11th, um, which is like, what, next Wednesday, if I'm not mistaken? Um, yeah, in exactly a week. So that'll be important as well. We'll see what happens tomorrow. You still have the hidden bullish divergence on the daily. And if we go over to the lower time frames, like the 30 minute and the 15 minute, does look pretty interesting on the 30 minute chart for clover going into tomorrow you're in a little bit of a falling wedge with some classic bullish divergence on the macd and then on the 15 minute chart for clover a little bit of a bullish shark pattern with triple classic bullish divergence on the macd so i'll be watching clover see if these low time frame technicals can confirm maybe leads to like a little bit of a bounce intraday i always watch it intraday if you're in the premium group you know what i'm talking about um but we'll see that's really it for clover um, yeah, I'm going to move on from that and just cover the ongoing trades. As soon as I finish this, we're just going to take a request for the rest of the stream. Um, Jeff says hood pump by hedges to bury clove more. I mean, you could always speculate and whatnot. I, I have no clue. There's no way for me to know whether or not that's happening. I think it's probably a combination of a million different things for hood going crazy and you know, Clover dropping another 2% after it's been in the downtrend. Um, and then Jeff also, I imagine it'll fall for earnings again, last chance for hedge funds to drag it. We'll see. You never know what the future holds. I mean, we'll see. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen the lump in the in the YouTube chat just yet. Um, but yeah, let's just recap the ongoing trades. RES, we were looking at this last night. Um, and... I waited until the morning to see how it opened. I looked at the company a little bit. I think they're like an oil company. Um, and, and I saw it was holding this $4 level when I put out an idea for it. And just my luck in the past month, literally an hour after I put out the idea, it drops another four or 5%. So I thought I was being patient by waiting for an entry intraday instead of right at the open. And then it just continues dropping. I mean, it was, it was pretty annoying to see that, but again, there's no certainty in trading just because you're at a bullish Gartley and a bullish crab PCZ double bottom doesn't mean you're going to hold it for sure. Um, and I would like to see this get back above 394. It definitely had a very rough day today. I don't even know if there was a catalyst for it, but 394 is a very important level to me. I would like to see it hold that. Otherwise, 357 is the next major support. So it's kind of in between those two levels going into tomorrow. Hopefully it can bounce back. Not the best start uh, to the trade just yet, but we'll see. It's not over yet only down about three four percent actually no it's down like five percent so 
definitely not a good start to the trade. Um, X, still around the entry of the trade if you miss that. Like I've been saying for X, patience on this one. It's a very, very long-term pattern. It's literally been three years. So, you know, it's going to go up, down, up, down. I just care about where this trade ends up. It could be a winner, it could be a loser, we'll see. But for right now, I'm just being extremely patient with this one. Fisker, flat day, not too much to recap there. Like I said last night for Fisker, I just want to see hold above 1455. That was the support in December of last year and January of this year. And it was a support today as well. It pretty much tested that level and it had a really big bounce off of it if we kind of zoom in over here. Um, off of that level, it had about a 5% intraday bounce, but then it came back down and it did close above that level by about 20 cents, which is good. Um, so into tomorrow, I just want to see it close all the, you know, one hour candles above 1455 and then hopefully it can start catching some bids. But Fisker might actually have earnings tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. So let me see if I can find it. The thing I hate about earnings is like sometimes for... A lot of different companies, it's not really clear. I wish there was like an official, official website. Um, I mean, there are a few, but a lot of the times, like I was looking at VIR today and it was, uh, Trading View was saying that VIR has earnings today. And then I was also looking at Google and it said it has it tomorrow. I just, that just is so annoying. But yeah, Fisker does have earnings tomorrow according to Google and Trading View. So we'll see how that goes. That's pretty much what everything comes down to, the earnings tomorrow. Good or bad, we shall see what the guidance looks like, what their expenses look like. Obviously, revenue is not there yet as cars not on the road, um, unless they sold like a, a lot of merch, which you never know, I did buy that merch. So we'll see, I don't even know if they report that. We'll see tomorrow, there's so many different factors. I think the most important thing for pre-revenue companies is just guidance and just their earnings call. Um, so we'll see how all that goes. Blackberry pulled back today. Um, didn't mean to do that. I just wanna see it hold above $9.60. It looked really good coming into today. There was a bullish pin bar. The hidden bullish divergence finally confirmed yesterday. And then today just kind of rolled over. That was pretty much the story for most of the meme stocks today. Um, you know, AMC got crushed. Clover was down a few percent. GameStop was also down 4%. So the meme stocks just really not having a good time lately. But $9.60 historically is a really important level for BlackBerry, as you can see. It was support in 2018, resistance in 2019, resistance in 20 or April of this year. And now it's support again. Hopefully you can just hold above it. Even the 200 day moving averages right there. So it's all about holding $9.60 on that name. Wish also pulled back, you know, not not a really good environment for swings in the last few weeks for sure. Um, you know, day trading has been amazing. Um, I really only share the day trades in the premium group. so. That's just really what I've been focusing on. You know, I've been trying the swings. I have been learning a lot of swings. It's really just been like 50-50 for the past few weeks, um, which is not typical. Usually it's like 70% is my average up until the last few weeks um, for swings hitting targets. And they're just being very weird right now. It's just not a great market for that environment. Um, so hopefully things can turn around, uh, but you always have to adapt. So that's why personally, I've just been focusing on day trades more. If I see a good chart that looks like a good swing, you know, I still try and put it out with usually tighter stop losses than usual, but um, it's still like, I'm still trying my best. It's just, you know, you have a system as a trader and sometimes it just doesn't work. Like just plain and simple. It's just about having patience. Um, but for Wish, it broke back under that 970 level. I wanna see it reclaim that tomorrow. It was down almost 7% today. Another meme stock um, that just had a really bad day. I was gonna say rough and then bad. So I just said rad almost, I don't know, not a rad day but it had a bad day or a rough day. Um, so hopefully this can bounce back. Just want to see it have some life. You know, there's just not a lot of life in these types of names. Um, QS was flat today. We don't really need to talk about that. And then Doc had earnings still around the entry. This trade's done nothing. So it is a little bit frustrating, you know, looking at the swings. It's it's not optimal. It's not. But this is probably like the worst it's been since pretty much, what, almost a year of me putting out swings. So you can't expect it to be you know, just green, green, green every single month of the year. There's going to be rough patches here and there. And we're just in one of them right now for at least for my trades personally, you might be crushing it. If you are, congratulations. It's just for the swings, not too great. Um, but for day trades, it has been pretty fun in the last month. A lot of good day trades, a lot of good day trading potential. And that's just what I've been placing most, most of my focus on. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the recap of the day. We got 30 people in here. Make sure to hit that like button. Let's get to 25 likes right now. You know, I don't know what the correlation is, whether it's just the, sw the swing's not being good or whatever it is, but we have been having also 
slower streams for the past couple of weeks. But again, like I say, there's going to be rough patches here and there. You always just got to show up and just do your job. So thank you for everybody for supporting the streams. I really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, we're just going to take a request for the rest of the stream, probably for another half an hour. Um, we will look at EVGO first. And yeah, if you want me to uh, take a look at it, take it before you drop it in the chat. Don't request anything that was up over 30% today. Don't request anything that um, I appealed within the last month. I need data on a chart for me to look at it, surprisingly. And nothing I say is financial advice. You know, technicals are not certainty, they're just probability. Um, all right. I uh, appreciate that, Christopher. Yeah, we'll take a look at Tesla. A lot of people want to look at Pinterest. I really don't know on Pinterest. I've been looking at it here and there. A lot of people have been asking me in the Discord. It's kind of in the middle of nowhere. We're going to get to it. Let's just do EVGO first. Um... So bad news is you broke the 1073 support that it was holding from March until uh, Monday. On Monday, it broke out of this kind of similar to AMC on AMC or on Monday, AMC broke its major support, which for AMC is 36. And this, I guess, it looks just like AMC to me. This broke its 1073 support yesterday, it had a fall through day and then today as well. It, was, it wasn't really red today, it was just kind of flat. Um, according to TradingView, earnings are also on the 5th. Um, I can't find the earnings on Google. I don't know. Definitely look up when the earnings are. That'll obviously be more important than any technicals. Maybe it is on the fifth. Depends. Trading view is like not always correct. So I don't know if I can trust that. Um, yeah, exactly. You're saying they're on the 11th apparently. So yeah, just keep an eye out for that. That's really important. Um, I would, the most important thing to me on EVGO is seeing it get back above 1073. That was a major level. If it reclaims it, then it has room back up to 1455. Above $11, there's not much resistance until 14. You just gotta get to 11 first. Um, so that's the really important thing right there. Other than that, let's see. I don't know. Too deep for a bullish shark. And then, yeah, I don't really know. I don't know the other way to kind of look at this. That's also, yeah, so that's really all I could do for that one. Try my best, it's just not the most amount of technicals on that chart. Upstart, it's kind of being a little bit weird. Not weird, but it's like, so I drew this demand line like this, connecting this low from March to the low in May. And it, it's hard to tell if it's really above or below the demand line. It's kind of just like on above, below, above, below. For right now, it looks like it's above. But really, it's just in this range. You look at it like this, just within this range over here. I think what it really needs to do is close candles on the daily above 135. If it can do that, I think it has room up to 165 and then eventually even all time highs. Um, but it just has to like it even got above 135 yesterday, but it, it kind of pulled back intraday. It needs to close, it needs to hold up those gains because um, that was where you could see three different candle highs over here if I take this away. Like, you know, this candle, this candle, and this candle. So that's really important. Other than that, not too much. Just got to hold that demand line. Um, I have another question about EVGO. We can just ask them about the RSI. On the one hour, it did get oversold, as you can see over here. Um, it was oversold on the one hour on this candle, and then it did bounce up. Right now, it still is actually slightly oversold. The last time it was oversold on the one hour, let's see what it did. So the last time it was oversold, it had about, but I mean this, I don't know if there was a catalyst on July 15th, but it went up like crazy. It went up like literally within a few hours, it went up 30%, which it did not do today. Um, other than that, any other time, so it was slightly oversold over here, went up about 11%. So yeah, it is oversold. We'll see, maybe it could try and double bottom off of $8.80. It all depends on what the price action is tomorrow. Um, Etsy earnings say if I'm not mistaken. Let's get to 25 likes right now. Hit the like button.
it was down 13%, 174.5. So it really just came right down over here. Let me just put a little bit of a... This is really where it came down after hours or came down to. Um, there was classic bearish divergence up here. It rallied and then I guess earnings kind of dropped the price. Um, let me clear up this chart for Etsy. So if it's at this level. I would say your closest support would be 163 and then your resistance would be about 179. So this yellow line is where the current price went to after hours. Um, so your resistance above you is one, pretty much 180 from this low over here and these lows, and then your support is 163 from these lows. And we'll see what it does tomorrow. It's, it's really hard to kind of look at until we see how you know it fills the candle tomorrow after what could be a gap down if the pre-market holds up like the after hours did, I guess. Um, Disney is next. It's just testing the 200-day moving average. A lot of big money looks at the 200-day moving average. Um, you know, people talk about it on CNBC all the time, a lot of hedge funds and everything. Really, a lot of the time, the only technical they do use is the 200-day moving average. Most scanners use the 200-day moving average. It's like a very, probably one of the most well-respected technicals across the board. So if Disney does break the 200-day moving average, that could lead to some, some selling in the short term. Um, also, Delta variant, I don't know if they're gonna, I mean, we're going to see what everything turns into, if they're going to have to close parks again or not. For right now, I believe they're still open, but they uh, I think they put back the mask mandate for indoor settings for their recreational parks. Also, Disney Plus, I don't really know how that's going, um, but it says earnings are on the 12th. So it all comes down to that. We'll get we'll get kind of a, a sign of how everything is going for Disney um, from a technical standpoint. I'd say you just want to hold above like 170. Um, Otherwise, you break that 200-day moving average, and then your next support would be like 165. Tesla's up next. It, it had a very big move last week, and now pretty much this week, it's just been going sideways. I like Tesla. I've been talking about it on stream for a while now. Kind of looks like Wyckoff accumulation to me. It looks like it's slowly entering the final phase of this range. Um, I think tes Tesla has room to all-time highs by the end of the year. If not, then I would just like to see it hold the 200-day moving average. Um, definitely hold above 600 that's like the worst case scenario i would not want to see it break 600 that would be like all right not good like for sure not good but really i, I am bullish on tesla for the next few months i mean obviously we'll see um how they do with everything i think they have the ai day or whatever that is soon um but yeah it's just kind of testing this little resistance area from back over here in march if it can break above i think 780 is your next resistance Pinterest, it's, there's not much I can do here. You know, technically it looked pretty decent going into earnings, but again, technicals do not matter when you have earnings. Earnings will always make the decision. You know, at this point, it's just, it's gapped down. It's kind of had a few inside days. It's bounced up a little bit. I guess uh, this might be kind of your little support area, this 54, 55 level. I definitely want to see it hold above that. Um, but there's just not much you can do. There's no way you can get a pattern out of just four candles right there. Um, even on the four hour, there's no divergence. I mean, if we take all that, you know, away and we just ignore the gap, then it's pretty much a bullish bat, right? If you look at it like this, almost it's a bullish bat and it did already bounce at the PCZ. It's just, I'm not sure if you can have huge gaps in your harmonics. Maybe you can, but I don't really use them like that. I usually like to see them like completely filled out. But if you ignore the gap, then it's pretty close to bullish back. The B point is a little bit deep, but not too deep. Um, and it already hit the 886 and actually bounced already 5-6% at the PCZ. So I don't know, we'll see. I just want to see it hold above this yellow support zone, which was resistance in last October and then support in May. Um, I just took the wrong thing off my watch list. IVR. Nice. Uh, it was actually, it was down today. Oh, all right. So it had a bad morning and then it had a good afternoon. Pretty much just like a doji candle for the day. It did fall under 335 for a little bit, but it closed above it. I just want to see it continue to close above 335. As long as it can continue to close above 335, the next resistance would be around like 350 to 360. 
If it cannot continue holding 335, then your next support is 322. That's really it. No patterns, no divergence. It's just support resistance levels. That's all we would be watching for right now. Um, Sundial is up next. Um, I have this charted. I even have alerts on it. Uh, so it might be trying to double bottom at the PCZ of a bullish bat. So if it can just hold above 75 cents, that could be really good. Um, there even is some hidden bullish divergence on the daily. Not really doing much. It's already confirmed and the price is going down instead of up. So that's not really playing out too much right now. Uh, I just want to see it hold above 75 cents. That was your support last July. Uh, and that's the important level to me. Um, if it can eventually break back above the 200 moving average at 85 cents, I think it has room back up to 94 cents, which is a historical resistance. That is Sundial and then Piton. Very choppy. Um, I don't know, maybe you call this a cup and handle. Like this. Maybe it could be argued, but it kind of like isn't really doing much, you know? It has to break above like 130. Uh, and if it does, I think it has room back up to 137, then eventually like 157 or 155, but it's just kind of going sideways. So I think it just, it all comes down to this, right? If we just kind of look at it like this, this is all just one big range. I think whichever way it breaks out of this range could be telling, right? So I just want to see which way it breaks first. I think 130 would be a breakout to the upside pretty much. Um, and yeah, that's it for Piton. One more like to 25 likes. We got Tar Heel Blue in the chat. I don't know if you're still here, but I'm really looking forward to your stream tomorrow. Make sure to go check out Tar Heel Blue's channel on YouTube. Um, I will be doing a stream with him next Monday in the morning, actually. I'm going to talk more about it on tomorrow night's stream. Um, but yeah, basically on next Monday morning, we're going to be doing some day trading live. We're just going to be talking maybe talk about Clover as well. I know there's a lot of people, um, you know, that watch me that are also interested in Clover. It's obviously an ongoing swing. Tar Heel Blue covers Clover like almost every single day. So if you want to check out his channel, it's Tar Heel Blue on YouTube. It'll probably be the first one that pops up when you look that up. Just show him some love and uh, excited to do the stream next week for sure. Um, let's see. Uh, but yeah, there's not much I can do on the Robin Hood chart. Definitely a crazy move today. Um, you said Unity, Jordan. Uber, uh, we'll also try and take a look at it, but the earnings kind of got crushed. Roblox. Um, take a look at that, Netflix. IPWR plug. Uh, Chatterfree says Pinterest looks good. Nice butterfly and garly bat impulse, depending on how you try to get over six when a gap will, can be a possibility. Yeah, a different interpretation. I'm just not a fan of it because, like, after a crazy gap down, like how Pinterest had in earnings, it's just you can't really see much of a clear pattern on like the four hour and stuff. So, you definitely are at you know harmonic PCZs and you still are above that support zone. I would just prefer it if you had like divergence or like a double bottom or a falling wedge or just something a little bit more than just like a harmonic Fibonacci pattern completion. So I don't know if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, you know, I hope it goes up. I'm not rooting against it by any means. Um, so I put in plug. Where did I leave off? Uh, Tar Heels still here enjoying the stream. Awesome. And yeah, um, he's also going to be live tomorrow with a really, really interesting stream. I think at 3 p.m. he's going to be going live. So. I'll be in the chat tomorrow if anybody else wants to join me and say what's up in the chat for a stream tomorrow. Definitely check it out. Um, plug. All right, so CLRB. And Coinbase. All right, so. We got a lot right here. This is going to be the final round of take requests for the night. Um, so after, I'm just going to drop a bunch of dashes in the chat. After that message, I just put in don't drop any more tickers. I'm just going to finish these, probably about 25 tickers right here. I'm just going to run through them all. 
DocuSign, this is a beautiful pattern, right angled, ascending, broadening wedge. It is technically a bearish pattern, but it's occurring in a bullish trend. So it's just, it's a monster right now, you know, and this is not really a bearish pattern until it breaks 185 and it's, you know, it's, uh, let me do it this way. It's currently 60, 60% above that. So you don't have to worry about that for any time soon unless, I don't know, something horrible happens to the company. So we're just gonna kind of zoom in and ignore all of the larger stuff on the chart. And then it just kind of looks like a bull flag. Actually, maybe a, actually another broadening wedge, a descending broadening wedge with uh, no diversion. So that's really it. I mean, if it breaks out this to the upside, I would probably just use Fibonacci to get the next targets. The 1272 would be 316. The 1618 would be 324. That's really it for DocuSign. Um, Max says, is the stream recorded for those with full-time jobs? Uh, oh, I, I thought you were going to talk about, I thought you were talking about my stream. Uh, I was like, you should know that, Max. But yeah, my stream is and his stream is as well. If you're talking about Tar Heel's stream, uh, I do believe all, all of his playbacks are uploaded just like mine right after the stream finishes. Um, BNGO is next. It's just kind of riding the 200 day moving average. Um, I just want to see a hold above 556. That was your, your support on March 5th. It was your support. On July 19th, it was your support on July 27th. And maybe a little bit of hidden bullish divergence. So it's out of support area. If it bounces here, I think it has room all the way up to $7.30. If it doesn't bounce here, then you would have support at 513. And then under that, 433. That's really it. I don't even know if you kind of look at it like this, but also maybe another descending broadening wedge right there. True Live Cannabis Corporation. Um, this one's kind of tough. Maybe a little bit of a wedge here. That's really all I got on this one. I don't really see any divergence on the daily or the four hour. So I just think it depends on whichever way this wedge breaks out. There's not even much support horizontally until 2652 from this high over here. So that's really it for that chart. Now we got Unity up next. So it looks like it hit the PCZ of a bullish bat back in the beginning of May when all the growth stocks are looking beautiful, like we talked about. Um, and also off the PCZ, it's creating an inverse head and shoulders. And the breakout of this will be around like one, probably 116 would be your breakout. If it breaks out of this, I honestly think it could run back up to 147. You have a gap fill at 147 and there's really just no, like if we clear this up, right? If you can cross this resistance, there's really not much resistance after that because the last time you crossed it you went straight up to 174 and then you just came straight back down so it's all about like getting above like 116 if you can do that i mean this could be on the cusp of a major breakout it's been taking a while as well and yeah it's looking pretty interesting i mean even if you kind of zoom in then you could just kind of call this on the four hour a cup and handle on the right shoulder so you have a larger pattern and then maybe a, another pattern within one of the shoulders of the pattern um, so that's really interesting. Uber, thank you for the 25 likes. Let's get to 30 now. I'm sorry, I have to, I have to keep up in the number. Um, so Uber, uh, came down to 39.85, which I'm not a fan of on earnings. So pretty much came down to the screen line over here. It broke under 41.75, which was a really important support. It closed right at that support before the earnings and then the earnings brought it under that support. That was your high from February of this or February of last year. Um, and now if you, now that you're under that, I mean, you have a gap fill to $36 on Uber. You have another support over here at 38, which was your resistance in September of last year. So a lot of different levels here. There's a lot of like, so many different levels on this chart. So if you just want to take a screenshot of all those levels, feel free. But these are pretty much all the different levels. It's just, I'm not going to say every single one of those numbers, but those are all your support and resistances. That's really all I can do here. I don't see much of a pattern or any divergence. Um, try to freeze drop the Discord link in the chat. Go join the Discord. We're really close to 1900 members in the Discord. So we, I think we need like 10 more members to hit 1900. So click that link, join the Discord. 
uh, and learn about trading, educational resources, um, get my trade alerts, get an alert every single time I go live on YouTube, get alerts from other analysts that we have in the Discord. Uh, there's a bunch of pinned resources that you can use to learn about trading. There's a bunch of paid bots in the Discord that you get for free. And there's almost 2,000 traders for you to meet. So click the link. It's always in the description, but Chatter Freeze just dropped in the chat. And make sure to join the Discord. Um, Aaron says, think Clove comes back up long term. It keeps falling long term. I think it goes up quite a bit. I mean... Look, there's no way for me to know for sure. I don't think Clove should be at $8 for too much longer. It could go lower before going higher. It's always possible it still is in a downtrend, but I do personally think uh, Clove is currently undervalued from both a fundamental and a technical standpoint. There's there's arguments to be made. It's just the biggest issue with Clover um, is just the float. I mean, 99% of Weeble, uh, Weeble's float is being reported as bag holders. If you go on Weeble, you go to the analysis section, 99% of people um, in long positions are currently at a loss. And I think the average cost is like 18 for those positions and the price is at eight. So every single time there's there's a pop, people just try and cut their losses. That's the issue. It happened to Fisker. It happens to a lot of stocks when they have major, major beat downs. And it takes time. It takes time to get flow rotation, to get more optimistic traders back into the flow, to get the back holders out of the float. And just kind of you know switch those shares around also the shorts and everything going on there it's just there's a lot with clover i obviously talk about it a lot on my stream and i wouldn't talk about it if i didn't think it had potential right you know i'm just going to sit here and just bring it up if i don't think it has a lot of long-term potential i mean it's probably the second most stock i've ever talked about on my stream after fisker so um yeah you know i'm a fan of clover i've been in clover for a while in and out of it and answer your question, I do think it long term goes back up, goes back up. Uh, not financial advice, you never know. It could just completely flop, but that's just my opinion. We'll see what happens. Um, just to answer your question. And then Tim also says, sorry, read your title. How can ARK revive meme stocks? Mainly for the ARK, I'm not really looking at meme stocks. I'm just looking at mid caps. Really, the ARK is an ETF. So it, it kind of summarizes how a lot of holdings in that ETF are doing. Um, and obviously I don't think they have equal weighting, so it depends on how much of each uh, stock in there. So basically it's not equal weighting, so they could have a lot of Tesla, and maybe a little bit of skills. So if Tesla goes up big and skills stumps, maybe their ARC, the ARC ETF is up, right? So it depends on how the holdings are, but overall it's an innovation ETF and there's a lot of mid cap stocks and a lot of growth names in it. So I use the ARC ETF and I use technicals on it to try and see how mid cap growth stocks are doing. And back in the beginning of May, there was a really bullish pattern on the ARK ETF, a bullish crab. There was bullish divergence on the daily around May 13th. You can go back to my stream from May 13th and May 14th. And I was talking about how it looked really, really good and it bounced up. And then we had a really good, pretty much second half of May and all of June um, for a lot of mid cap growth stocks until they dumped in July. So that's really what I mean by like how it can revive mid caps. Meme stocks, a lot of meme stocks also are kind of not really in exactly the ARK ETF, but they move similarly to the ARK ETF. Um, so, you know, that's really what I'm, I'm kind of talking about there. Uh, but there's a bunch of different ones you can look at. There's also, I don't really bring it up on stream, but there is the IWO, which is the Russell 2000 growth ETF instead of the regular Russell 2000 small cap ETF. Um, but I'm not too exactly sure on what's in this. So do your own research there. Um, I'm gonna finish these stickers in a second here. Let me just make sure I have all the questions done. Um, yeah, a lot of day traders in Clover for sure. Jeff says, been pondering, trying to day trade my way out of the hole, We're just gonna be patient. Yeah, I mean, it depends on whatever works best for you. For me personally, um, I've been trading Clover since January. Definitely the, the Hindenburg stuff uh, was a pretty large loss for me. I was definitely pretty heavily in Clover when that all came out. Um, but then June happened and June was amazing or the beginning of June was amazing. And then I just started day trading calls on Clover during the downtrend, like literally since 28 to now at eight dollars i've just been non-stop day trading clover with calls and now it's shares so i don't want all of you people who are clover fans to be mad at me i've been doing it with calls now with shares so i'm not buying and selling the shares 
not touching shares for right now. I'm just in and out of calls. Um, and it's been really good for me I, until this week. This week is a little bit off, but for the past like month and a half, it's been like nonstop winners. This week I've been a little bit, eh, it's not been any big losses or anything, but just a little bit sloppy. We'll see. Tomorrow's a new day for Clover. Um, just not really getting enough volume for any good day trades this week, unfortunately. The volume is just really, the volume has been low, but um, this week, especially the volume has been really, really low. Sorry if I keep touching my eyes, just I think there's something in it. So it's like really bothering me right now, but I'll try to ignore it. Um, so anything else that I missed in the chat? Yep, patience is important. Jeff also said that in a holding out of spite, hedge funds trying to destroy a company that helps people's health because uh, Tremont supported GME traders is absurd. There's a lot, there's a lot going on with Clover for sure. Um, you also said, I did slightly well with day trading it before June, but then obviously didn't see a full return on the 6-8 pop. Yeah, that, it's not easy to catch a stock as it's going crazy. Like if you look at something like, you know, obviously Clover, but if you look at AMC, trust me, there were a lot of diamond handed, uh, they call them apes that probably held it from $2 to, to $70. But to be fair, 99% of people did not do that. You know, a lot of people were in on it for a part of the journey, but most people do not buy at the exact bottom at sell at the exact top. So you need to understand that it's unrealistic for you to every single time in, in each ticker that you trade to nail the exact bottom and the exact top. You obviously want to do your best, but you have to be okay with not literally getting the exact low and top. You just got to trade a part of it, right? A part of the move. As a trader, as an investor, you want to be in for the for the bigger move, but I'm just talking about in a trader's perspective, your whole entire goal is to get in a trade, make money, take profits, find another trade, and on and on and on, just compound gains. Um, so obviously, none of that's financial advice. I'm just saying like, you can't, you know, in hindsight, you can't just, you know, say, oh my gosh, I'm so mad I didn't buy at the exact bottom, I sell at the exact top. Most people don't do that. You just try and do your best with the information you have at any given time. That's really all you can do. Um, definitely recommend watching a lot of Mark Douglas's lectures on YouTube. I have a playlist on my channel for his lectures. If you want to check it out, it helps a lot with trading psychology. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to finish off the rest of these stickers and then probably get out of here. Keep hitting that like button. Let's get to 30 likes right now. We are going to get to uh, CMG. It's on my watch list. Uh, it's towards the bottom though, so we're going to get to it towards the end of the stream. First up, Royal Caribbean. So just for everybody who's still in the stream that's waiting, I have Royal Caribbean, Chewy, Roblox, Netflix, Intel, CEI, IPWR, Plug, CLRB, CMG, Tattooed Chef, COMS, and then Coinbase. So all those are still on my watch list. So I'm just gonna finish those and then get out of here. Uh, first off for Royal Caribbean, down sloping channel, had a little bit of a fake out over here and then just came back into the channel, it even hit the supply line and then pulled back at it. So. This is your channel. Um, it tried to break above the 200 moving average, but just really couldn't. And then it says earnings were today, actually. Let me see if it did. I might have been pre-market. Yeah, it was flat after hours, so I assume it was pre-market. Was down two and a half percent today. I think your uh, your support would be around sixty-eight dollars, sixty-eight fifty, and then resistance your 200 day moving average. Um, hopefully I'm not lagging right now. It's saying I am on my end, but it does that a lot. So I don't know if I actually am. Um, Chewy could be trying to break out. If Chewy gets above 93, I'm pretty bullish on it. Honestly, I mean, there's another way to put it. If Chewy can just hold above 87, I'm bullish on it. 87 was the real resistance. 92 was like the one time it just got up there and then pulled back. So honestly, Chewy above 88, 87, I actually am bullish. That's the major inverse head and shoulders. That's how a downtrend can change into an uptrend. We've already been seeing an uptrend since May. So I like Chewy above 88. I think it has room back up to 106. All you gotta do is just continue to hold 88, but then if you break that, 200 day moving average. Roblox. You know, I'm happy to see that it's doing well, but also a little bit frustrating, just a little bit. Um, I think it was literally on this day, a swing trade got stop hunted and then it just ran all the way back up and we've, we've covered it. We've covered it since then. Um, we've talked about how it still looks bullish and, and Cheddar Freeze has been bringing it up a lot and it looks like it broke out today. 
Um, after a bullish hammer candle yesterday, it even confirmed classic bullish divergence. Yeah, I mean, Roblox looks, in my opinion, really good above 77. And this is what I've said. I've said this. Even though the swing trade failed, I've continued to say above 77. I'm a fan of it. It's back above it. It might be breaking out of the falling wedge. It got a very nice reaction off the PCZ. Looks good over here. I think next stop could be 93 as long as it holds 77. But for a chart that only has a few months of data, that's a lot. That's a lot going on, which is really impressive. Um, Netflix is just messing around with the 200-day moving average. Could be argued you have a little bit of hidden bullish divergence on the daily MACD if you include these little two uh, histogram wicks. Um, if it can just continue holding above this support at 504, your next resistance would be 536. And then 556 and then 575. And you already did break like a little bit of supply line. So we'll see what it does. Nice close above the 200 moving average. Hopefully it can continue to do so. Um, Intel is next up, 56 off the top of my head. I've talked about this level all year. How much I love the 56 level. Well, how much I love it above 56. I don't like it under 56. You zoom in on the chart in 56, support June of this year, resistance October of last year, support in April of last year, resistance in March of last year, support in December of 2019, support in November of 2019, resistance in June of 2018, like 56 is a huge level for Intel. It's the everything level for me. Above it, I think it's really bullish. Below it, I think it's bearish. So if Intel can get back above 56, I'm a fan of it again. But for right now, I don't like it under 56. There is a gap fill though, pretty interestingly. I guess it was a gap down on earnings maybe. There's a gap fill to 56 almost, which is not only like your insanely important historical level and a gap fill, but it's also your 200 day moving average. So it's all about this. If it can just break above all this, all of this, then I think it has room all the way back up to fill another gap at 62.25. And then maybe all the way back up to 70. Um, if not though, your next support probably is around 51 from these highs over here last December. CEI is next up. Um, really interesting. Classic bullish divergence on the daily. Bouncing off of this low from September of 2020. Up 10% today. Big highest volume today since June 14th. Um, why is it not showing up? After hours, it looks like it was down like 1%. Maybe if we, if we look at it like this, could be breaking out of a wedge as well. Looks good to me. Um, next resistance, 55 cents. After that, 68 cents. In terms of support, 45 cents. So you just gotta hold about 45 cents. That's what it's all about on Camber Energy. IPWR. Um, might be working on a little bit of a break hook and go. If we go over to the weekly, it probably looks better. Yeah, look at that. Got a breakout, then you got a hook, which is like a back test of the breakout. Now you're trying to get some bounce or go action. Um, so yeah, you, you broke out of this $15 resistance. Now you're just back testing it, trying to flip it into support. If you can continue to find this as your support level, your next resistance would probably be around $18.70, which even lines up with, or 19 was your support back from 2017. So that would be your next major resistance, like 18 to $19. And your support is just 15. Um, so that's really it for IPWR. Um, sorry, I missed a few chats. We still got like six, seven more tickers to do. Um, we got plug, CLRB, CMG, Tattoo Chef, uh, COMS, and then coin. And then I'm gonna get out of here, but let me just read these chats. Jeffrey says, Miss 1983 webcam. That, that gave me so much OCD, I don't even know. So I'm glad that we don't have the 1983 webcam. It's actually a really good webcam. I just, uh, I'm just not using it right now because I need to configure everything again, which takes a lot of time and I'm just lazy. But if I don't configure it, it looks like how it looked last night. 
um shelby the market has been a little bit strange this week really for the last month in my opinion it's been strange but it is what it is you know every every situation in the market will be unique um bala says why oh what's up bala in the chat how you doing uh bala says why are there yellow stars next to your time frame buttons on trading view uh if you're talking about these it's just because i have them uh Oh, you can see it. I have them like over here, just kind of like pre-saved. Those are the time frames I use the most, the weekly, the daily, the four hour, and the one hour. So instead of me having to hit the drop down and then go to them, I just hit the stars over here. I favorite those time frames and then they just pop right over here. So I can uh, just look at those time frames easier. Um, but yeah, uh, for everybody dropping new tickers in the chat, we're done with take requests for the night. I'm just finishing, I'm finishing out, uh, all the takers from before, which I still haven't done yet. I'm just going to finish these and then get out of here. Two more likes hit 30 likes. Keep hitting that like button. Um, but yeah, plug. Hit the PCZ of almost a bullish Gartley. Had a nice reaction off of it. Came up to the B point, which could have been like a first target on that. Pulled back. And currently it's just chopping around. I don't really know. Um, if you go over to the four hour, it might have just broken to the downside or a little bit of like a triangle, unfortunately. But it's not that large of a pattern. Um, all right, we'll, we'll take a look at DPW. That'll be the final, final one of the night though. I'd say 2530 is your closest support on plug. Not much I can do apart from that. CLRB. It's at the most important area, this $1 level. It's it's your make or break area. You break above, I mean, you break below it and you have nothing left. So you just got to hold $1. That's really it for this one. It's all about just holding one. You have bounced off of it four times in the past before major runs back up in price. You just got to hold that. It's really what it comes down to. So hopefully you can hold it. I mean, let me, I can't even remember that ticker, but moving on, CMG, Chipotle at all time highs. So it wasn't a range between 1300 and 1600. It broke that range at the end of July. Now it's just going crazy. Just use Fibonacci here. Your 2618, which is your next Fibonacci resistance is at 2048, obviously, you have a psychological resistance at 1900 and then also 2000, probably 1950 as well. So that's really all you can do at, for in, in terms of resistance at all time highs. Um, that's really it for CMG. Sorry, I just kind of spaced out right there. Tattooed Chef, Falling Wedge. Tested the 200 day moving average, pulled back at it a little bit today, hidden bullish divergence on daily. If it breaks above the 200 day moving average, I think it could run back up to 23. If it cannot break above it, your support is 19. COMS. It's at a make or break area as well. This 181 level has been support many times historically. It bounced off of it very nicely. And you just gotta continue holding above 181. That's really it for uh Calm Sovereign Holding Corp. I thought this was going to be Comcast, but it's not. What's the ticker for Comcast? CMCSAY. Why do they make that the ticker? Um, I don't know if there's anything else. I think the B point's a little bit too deep for a bullish, or for an alternate bat. It's definitely under the 50. Yeah, that can't be an alternate bat. Maybe a bullish crab, but the D point looks a little bit too shallow from X to D, but you did get to a 2618 from B to D, and then you kind of made a higher low double bottom and then reverse. So some sort of an X to ABCD there. And then I guess you also broke out of this supply line. Um, so in terms of resistance on this, I'd say around uh, 264. And then after that, 347. You could also just use Fibonacci like that. Coinbase uh, looks like it might be rounding out a little bit. Everything everything in between 208 and 262 is just a range to me. If it breaks above 262, I think it has room back up to 300. If it breaks below 200, I have no clue. But in this whole entire range, I'm just kind of waiting for it to get out of it for right now. I guess earnings are on the 10th according to TradingView. Probably 
that's probably really important um, for Coinbase. So we'll see how that goes. And then final ticker of the night, DPW. If you ignore this scam wick and hit the PCZ of a bullish bat, went a little bit lower, which I guess you could just call it an alternate bat then. And now it's bouncing. Um, next resistance is 283 from this candle high over here on July 13th. And then it was also your candle low on March 30th. And then your support is really just around, you know, two bucks. So you're kind of in between them, not the best reward to risk. Uh, but just it could it could go in either direction, right? Kind of like flipping a coin, as Metre would say. And uh, yeah. I just put ball. Right, I'm really tired. Ball in the chat just said, well, today's candle on Coinbase qualifies a bullish engulfing candle. I wanted to look up coin just to confirm that, and I typed in Bala. So great. So coin. Uh, this would not be a bullish engulfing candle in terms of it did not engulf yesterday's candle because i believe it gapped up a little bit today if i'm not mistaken but it, you can't even really see that because look it, it, so yesterday's close was 230 dollars 18 cents and then today's open was 231 so it looks like it gapped up there but if i go to lower time frames today's what the fourth Oh yeah, very, very slightly. Like literally barely even gapped up. So it opened higher than yesterday's close. So for bullish engulfing, you would want to have it either open at the same exact level or like a little bit under or however many under, but basically this green body should fully be engulfing this red body and it's not because it opened up higher. Um, but it is certainly engulfing this whole candle, this whole candle, this candle, and this candle, and this candle's body. So. If you ignore yesterday's candle, it definitely is engulfing a lot of different price action. It's definitely important, good volume as well. So it's a good candle, just not super textbook in terms of yesterday's. Um, it, it just had to open up a little bit lower. Um, but as you can tell, I am pretty tired. So thank you for watching the stream. I'm gonna get out of here now. Hit the like button if you didn't already. Join the Discord if you haven't already. And subscribe if you haven't already. I'll be live. I There's a 50-50. I don't know if I'm gonna be live tomorrow night or not, but. I'll let you know in the Discord. Um, so have a great trading day tomorrow. Good luck and peace out.